trick is to go faster, guys. At least that's what I'm told. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna clear this. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh. Man, this bike does it all. This thing is so much fun. We just got to a nice high point to do some comms. All right guys, we're gonna do a ad hoc video here. I was planning on starting out with a real basic DMR series, but uh, I have really dived into it over the last two and a half weeks. So I kind of want to put the cart in from the horse and show you what I'm doing with DMR now from the perspective of a prepper. None of this let's connect it to the internet nonsense. Then we will go back and I'll walk you through the very beginning of how I approach DMR. We're gonna do a multi-part series. I think it's gonna go for the next five or six weeks. But today I wanna to show you some really cool stuff I'm doing with the Motorola Moto Turbo radios. Stick around. All right, like I said, I wasn't planning on making this video. I was just planning on running some experiments. Let me show you what I got going on here. So I decided to come out here into the field and do some range tests. I went ahead and brought up my Hobsco Hob Alpha and also my Panasonic FZM1 Tough Pad and also brand new to me. I've only been using Motorola's now for about a week and a half. This is the Motorola 6550. But basically, I'm gonna go ahead and try to boot up here and we're gonna try to send some messages over IP, basically UDP, over the RF uh, connection there. And uh, I have been doing tests right now all over the backcountry here just to get some range tests. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about that in a minute after I boot up. All right, for me, this is just a two-step process. I'm actually gonna make it where there won't be any steps involved. It's gonna be plug and play. But for right now, what we wanna do is bridge the two networking uh, devices that are on this Motorola with the computer so we can send network traffic from this computer to the Motorola's ethernet that's connected via USB and then over its RF signal back to the house. I've already gone ahead and run the one command where I set up some basic routing. In the future, this will all be plug and play so you won't even have to deal with this nerd stuff. And then the next thing we're gonna do is uh, start a little client application I've written. This is just a prototype. We're gonna have a fancy touch uh, enabled uh, application that will run on this tough pad. And we're gonna go ahead and try to traffic our UTM coordinates. So we've got that right here. And like I said, I'm trying to do distance tests. So let's see if I can do this. I can't do this with holding the camera. Stand by guys. All right, 969. All right, let's go ahead and try to send a packet. I doubt this is gonna work because I've got a hill here, but uh, basically I'm sending a signal to the radio and the server that's running at the house. And uh, yeah, as expected, I'm pretty sure that uh, the mountain behind us over here is gonna cause some problems for us. All right, that's not gonna work. It did work before. Maybe we'll just talk about what I did. Uh, I don't know if I wanna ditch the bike right now and uh, get on top to a higher point. Gonna move to a new location. This might be a good time to uh, show you guys something that I'm carrying in there. Six color desert camo netting. Been wanting to do this experiment for a while. Not too bad. I'm actually way off the beaten path here. Uh, the other place where I did the combo test was just on the other side of that uh, that ridge over there, and it worked successfully. So we're gonna ditch the bike for the first time. Again, as you get closer, of course, you're gonna see some stuff, but uh, pretty happy with that. Dry bag needs to go. It's orange. I didn't want to spend any money, but uh, I'll just toss this somewhere else and load it up with my, my other gear. All right, guys. So here's a shop from maybe uh, 30 feet, 40 feet or so. So it looks like it's going to be good. Like I said, I'm the only one out here. So we're going to just do a little bit of uh, bushwhacking and hopefully I could just get on that ridge. I think we have about two miles point to point for this exercise to work, sending data over uh, the DMR uh, digital channel. 
All right, guys, we actually did it. This is really tough to do one-handed. Um, I have it here running on the screen. In fact, I did record it. Um, I'm looking for a better system to carry this. I wish I had brought my chest rig, but people always ask me, why the heck do I always insist on IP68 rating and ruggedized gear? And it's for stuff like this. I mean, I am just sweating all over this keyboard. And just so you guys actually do believe me, hold on, we're gonna press the up arrow key. All right, and we're gonna send another command off to that server. And it should take a second or two, and there it is. All right, let's talk about what all of this means for preparedness and uh, having the ability to have secure comms for emergency preparation. All right, folks, sorry for the video being raw, but uh, let's just use this as a freestyle video to introduce the DMR series that's coming up. So I've been a licensed amateur radio operator since 2017, didn't get on the air till a couple years after that. So I've only have about uh, just under four years of experience. And in that time, I primarily have only worked with analog radio. I wanted to get into DMR, at least see what the fuss was about, but everybody said it was so complicated. They didn't know what a code plug was and all of this other vernacular you honestly really don't need to know. And it's a whole lot simpler, especially when you look at it through the lens of preparedness and not connecting it to the internet. So I have always approached communications through the lens of tools and not toys. And I'm looking at DMR as a tool that will give me a little bit more privacy because it's digital compared to the Baofeng Army and those cheap analog radios. So if nothing else, the fact that I have a DMR radio will allow me to have a little bit more operational security. Now, I went down the path of looking at the Anytone 878 UV2 Plus because they claim to have AES 256-bit encryption, built-in APRS, and then obviously it solved the uh, transitional uh, radio because it supports both analog and DMR. The first two were kind of a bust for me. We'll explain that in a future video. And um, I didn't want to give up on it because my goal for DMR was not to connect it to the internet. I wanted it to have secure local simplex or even through repeater comms that I actually own, no tie to the internet. And I came across these Motorola 6550s. It's the uh, kind of the original DMR version of this. So at the time that I picked this up, they're going for about $120 a pop. In fact, the two radios, the two programming cables, and a aftermarket dock ran me about $300 flat for this experiment. So my goal was, can we go ahead and maybe send our own data out of band over DMR, and then in the future when I get my business license, enable encryption and the answer to all of that is yes all right guys i don't want this to be a long video because this is the video that should have been uh the last in our series about four or five videos out but uh today's my day off and i wanted to do some range testing so i humped up here a little bit farther we were able to uh, make that communication happen over simplex radio to radio so this is for close-in communication this does not replace any of the things that i do on hf for more regional and country level comms so basically what you saw me do here it's kind of interesting there was a youtube video where uh, someone a few years ago kind of did a prototype like this but they didn't explain how they did it i will explain that about four or five videos out but basically i took my field uh, tablet my uh, fzm1 the moto turbo xpr 6550 and the programming cable and connected them all together i've got the same setup at the house and the cool thing about these Motorola Moto Turbo radios is that they have a couple of network interfaces built in. So when you plug in the USB cable into the computer, a network device is presented to the computer that we can actually use to send data to. What's even cooler is that there's a second network interface that works with the RF, so basically the radio on this thing. And the command you saw me run was to set up a IP route to bridge those two together. So any network data that I send on the computer goes over the USB cable to this radio and then is transmitted in the clear. Now for performance, I actually wrote my own uh, transport protocol uh, on top of UDP and it is a lot faster. So we're two miles out here and I was able to get the data back in under a second completely uncorrupted. So what's nice about this is that we are using a uh, business license here on 440 megahertz. I'm working with a friend. Uh, we're using his business frequency right now and uh, I'm not encumbered by any of the ham radio stuff. The other thing that we could do, and I will get there now that uh, we're gonna go down this path, is that I can encrypt all of that data on my end so that it'll be truly trust, trust no one uh, 
encryption. I don't have to trust Motorola. I'm just using their uh, transport layer and the tools they built, but the encryption is my own. So that will be coming. So basically going to do a shared key cryptography, uh, AES 256-bit crypto that this station will know, the other station will know, and then those messages where I was trafficking my uh, geolocation, my UTM coordinates would all be fully encrypted. So that's coming. Uh, I don't know how easily I'm going to be able to share that unless you guys have a business license. So really that's all I wanted to share with you guys is that I have a different take on DMR. So number one, I'm going to make this real simple to use and digest in the next video. We're going to approach DMR from the prepper perspective, none of this internet nonsense. I'm going to talk more about these radios um, and kind of walk through some of the nomenclature on how to get going with DMR first on the amateur radio side, and then we'll move on over to the, uh, the commercial size. Like I said, if you guys are not aware right now, these Motorola 6550s are about 120 bucks. Uh, batteries are about $20 if they're aftermarket on eBay. The uh, chargers are like 25 bucks on Amazon aftermarket. So really, you're just looking to get yourself a radio. So I'll walk through all the programming specifically for the Moto Turbo 6550s, probably five videos out. We'll do uh, any tones in the next one. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Uh, be strong, be safe, and be prepared. And one last thing, if you want to see more content like this, please consider supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee. Um, I would love for this to be my full-time gig. The only reason I'm even out here is I found out that Columbus Day was a holiday. I know they're not calling that anymore. But um, I had the day off and decided to go play radio uh, on the, the business frequency side with my buddy. Cheers, all. I had way too much fun today. I actually just blew out both tires at the same time, coming down a whole bunch of rocks. I wish I had the, uh, the GoPro going, but... Uh, I'm surprised it didn't have happen sooner. My first flat was within the first 100 miles. I'm about 600 miles into it, and this is technically my now second and third flat. I only have uh, one tube in the kit here. So it may be time to, uh, to go tubeless because I'm sure as heck not going to do a rear tire repair out here. So I knew it was only a matter of time before this happened. And the guys at Hobsco maybe two months ago told me there's a walk mode. So what you can do is put this with zero assist and hold down the minus uh, button for a couple seconds. And you actually move at about, oh, about three miles per hour. So this is actually helping out with this uh, 77 pound bike or so. Uh, they say it's 72, but I think it's closer to uh, 77. So the wife's gonna pick me up. Thank goodness for, uh, for being married. Okay, see you guys.